welcome back to my channel, Shea TV. My name is Marissa Hill. If you are new to my channel, don't forget, hit that subscribe button as well as give this video a like at the end if you enjoy it. And don't forget, hit the notifications to remind yourselves of when we are posting updated new videos. And as always, we love when you guys give us comments. So let me know what you think after this video. Today, we're gonna to be doing an unboxing on the New Balance Stray Rat Collabs. These are the Sewer Stompers, the 827 Silhouette. Very excited about this shoe. It's different than anything that I have in my collection. And so now we're gonna get started. Let's open these boxes up. I have two to show you today, which is pretty exciting. So you guys get extra visuals on the shoes that we have. Uh, is our first shoe Put it sideways so you guys can get that nice lovely angle from that way. Sewer Stompers, that is an interesting name. It's giving me Ninja Turtle Splinter vibes. I feel like Splinter, if he could wear a shoe, would be wearing these shoes for some reason. It just, it's literally like the Splinter shoe. I Come to New York. I found myself for the first time without a home, wandering the sewers, scavenging for whatever I could find. I think they probably should have given it the splinter name as far as like names go instead of the sewer stoppers. This is an interesting colorway. So we have like this murky kind of brown suede that is literally wrapping around the entire shoe. I can see that they gave us an additional lace set, which is also in that kind of murky brown colorway. There's some vibrant lacing here. We've got these bright red laces, which I love. And there's just hints of that red on the end here, on the medial and the lateral New Balance end, which is very cool. It's looking like we've got some nice mesh that wraps around here. And then we have the Stray Rats logo kind of adorning the back, the heel where the pull tab is. Very cool silver coloring there. And almost is like a camo underneath. I love that they added camo. It's just like so left filled, but it kind of just works. The 827 New Balance logo is very well stitched on top of this mesh in this nice purple tone. It's definitely some premium suede that we have going on here. And we have this nice olive midsole that wraps around the shoe as well. And almost like a slime green kind of color that they added in here. It's nice slime green piping all over the shoe. Very cool. So this silhouette, which is interesting, has not been new to New Balance as far as, you know, 1997 was actually when this shoe was first introduced. And it was introduced as an elite running shoe. Can't imagine back in 1997, I would have been all over this shoe. This is a beautiful shoe. And as far as the silhouette goes, I know that I've also seen this in the Amy Leon Dior colorway, which I just ordered. So keep an eye out for that unboxing as well. She did an amazing styling of this silhouette. And this is actually not the first silhouette that Stray Rats has actually partnered with New Balance on. They did a Joker collab on the New Balance 990B3. And that was in two color ways. It had a darker subterranean take on the classic look, but that shoe was an amazing shoe. Some people say it was one of the best colorways done in the 990B3, the Joker. 
but this is definitely a completely different direction. Stray Rats took this from the Joker to a sewer, which is very cool. Let's take a look on the insoles here. A nice purple, and it says Stray Rats with a New Balance logo. Nice and squishy feeling. I love that purple though. Purple and red just really go together. I don't know what it is about those two colors, but I love the combination. And as far as these little dots here and the eyelets on the laces, these are actually all reflective. I know that you can't see it right now. We'll try and get you guys a better visual on that. But on the medial and lateral side of the shoe, it's actually reflective. And it's crazy because I'm looking at the mesh here inside. It's like little tiny threads that are gold. Very well thought out construction of this shoe. I really, really like it. All right, now that we've kind of gone through the shoe, I want to go into the fit. I am a 7.5 in men, which translates to a nine in women. And I actually just stuck with that size. These fit me perfectly. So I wouldn't recommend going up or down. I would just stay true to size in these. Uh, as far as comfort goes, these are extremely comfortable shoes. I think New Balance is very, very under, like people just don't look at the shoe. It's like, oh my God, this is amazing cop. These shoes are insane. Like if I went into my closet right now, I would say that in my top 10 silhouettes, the New Balance are some of my most comfortable sneakers that I have in my collection. And as far as my arches go, I have very high arches and skinny feet. And so these shoes just fit perfectly. I mean, especially for that arch support, New Balance is so good with giving you all this extra padding here, which I absolutely love. And yeah, it's just a great, well-made shoe. And you can tell there's like some definitely, definite quality material that's created this wonderful silhouette. The Stray Rats and New Balance collab, I think a lot of people slept on this shoe for some reason. And I think from like experience of not going for the Amy Leon Dior's, that was a major mistake on my behalf because those shoes are killing it right now. But these were so exclusive. I mean, there were just a few raffles that were done for the shoe. And as far as stores that actually released it for sale were very limited and I mean limited. So this was a very, very difficult shoe to cop. And I'm just extremely excited because I know I'm going to wear the shoe and I'm probably not going to see this on very many people's feet. How many of you guys love the fact that you have a shoe and you're strutting around the city or wherever you live, knowing that it is highly unlikely that you're going to see somebody in the same shoe as you. Feels good, right? I know it feels good. All right. So now that we have kind of gone in the direction of talking about, you know, having a shoe that you can rock where nobody has, it's just leading me into that shade portion of the video. We're, we're veering, we're veering off guys. We're going in a different direction. I can't stand it when I am in a room and everyone has the same sneaker on. Oh, it just kills me inside. It's like, does anyone have a unique identity? Anyone in this room? So I go to castings, right? And there's like 50 models could be a hundred models. And I just can't help but look down at people's feet. I mean, it's a problem. You know, I think we all as sneakerheads have this problem. We are constantly caught looking down at people's feet. Well, when you're in a room with a bunch of models, every single one of them is wearing plain basic white Air Force ones. And I'm not hating on that silhouette. Don't get mad at me. But what I cannot stand is that every person in the room is wearing one. And I actually have maybe 60 photos of me just taking pictures in New York City of people wearing white Air Force Ones. 
because I had to prove it to one of my girlfriends because she wanted to buy a pair and I'd say, no, everyone has that shoe. You can't be like everyone. Do not be like everyone. Be different. You have it in you to be different. You don't have to wear white Air Force Ones like every other girl in this city. And so that is where the shade had to come out because I just love a different shoe. I love a shoe that not everyone's gonna go for. That's a shoe that really defines your personality. And you know, just this designer himself, I mean, he is all about being different, not being about hype, not being about in people's faces, popularity, this and that. And I love that I'm gonna get to go in to one of my castings rock the silhouette while everyone is literally wearing white Air Force Ones because guess what? Guess what, ladies and gents? I'm going to stand out from the rest and that's shade. Now for my resellers out there, we are going to talk about the retail price of the shoe. It went for 130 retail. Uh, for base sizes, currently the prices are around 185 to 461, depending on which size you are. So there is some money to actually be made on these shoes if you're planning on reselling them. As far as big, bigger sizes go, the prices range from 245 to 375, and so those are also doing very well. Historically, New Balances tend to do better with larger sizes. Uh, and as far as the last silhouette that Stray Rats did with New Balance, the Joker sizes um, are all doing very well right now. The retail on that was 190, so they were made in USA, a little bit better quality material, so that's why those were a bit more expensive. But they are reselling for 250 to 560 currently. Just so you know, if you watch this video later on, maybe a few weeks or months after this, those prices may be different. So don't kill me if the prices change like the stock market, prices are continuously changing on a day-to-day -day basis. And so for now, those are the prices for the new balances, but I do think this is a great cop if you're able to get it. Um, definitely a different shoe and definitely a good shoe to resell if that was your plan to do so. All right, so it's time to get into the history portion of the shoe. Let's talk about the brand Stray Rats. So Julian Consuegra started Stray Rats when he was 22 years old, which is crazy because I just can't even imagine at that age starting something as big as this. It grew basically from the roots of South Miami, which is where Consuegra uh, was raised. When it comes to clothes, his nature can be neurotic and he's an encyclopedic knowledge of old band rap and streetwear tees. The designs he creates mix the context of the full history of modern graphic t-shirts with original touches from his own mind. Stray Rat's style is grounded in pop culture, hardcore music, and multiple generations of streetwear all filtered through Consuegra's lens. Drawing from authentic sources and the surrounding cultures Consuegra has immersed himself in, Stray Rats emerged as one of the most prolific streetwear brands today. While still managing to avoid the spotlight of popularity and hype that has led to the demise of countless other labels, he's really kept this brand pretty grounded. Although he is now a local in New York, like I said, he is from South Florida before moving to Miami itself in 2000. He was the son of two first generation immigrants, his mother from Cuba and his father was from Colombia. Although he turned to his older brothers for influence on different cultural things. Consuegra started out designing album art, flyers, t-shirts for several bands. It was through a mutual adoration for hardcore music that he met Nathaniel Matthews online, who would later assist with lookbooks and designs for Stray Rats. There wasn't a brand I could connect to in my city like LA, New York, and Tokyo, he said. I loved Supreme and what it stood for, but I had a lot of hometown pride. So he just didn't really feel as though he could actually connect with anyone in Florida at the time, as far as, you know, this streetwear. It was all in other cities, so he kind of stepped up to the plate and 
saw that there was void that was missing and started selling these teas. And he actually started selling them out of the trunk of his car. And his friends would actually wear his clothing to these hardcore shows and they would support him. And then people started kind of trying to tune into what all of his friends were wearing and they wanted to see what was going on with it. And then it just kind of started to grow from there. Occasionally references will be so deep to fans that without knowing exactly, you know, what the design is or where it originated from, it basically takes that consumer a long period of time before they're like, hey, I get what that designer meant. I get what he was trying to go for. It's like being told a joke and not getting it for a year. That's kind of how his designs are meant to be. They're very, very deep. And that comes with all of his deep knowledge that he has for certain things. The ideas around community acceptance and us versus them mentality would come to be the foundation of Stray Rats. And that was what it was built upon. So there were a lot of influences around Julian when he was younger, drugs, alcohol, this and that. And as far as, you know, really being peer pressured into going that direction, he kind of found an escape, but that was in music. And that was in that hardcore music scene. He wanted his friends as well, you know, from Miami to wear something that they could relate to. And so that's where those foundations from, you know, South Florida kind of were built into this brand. That sense of loyalty and pride is an intrinsic and constant component, he says in his designs. All of those involved behind the scenes are individuals Julian met early on in his career and that all those all included people he had met in Miami. For Consuegra, running a brand goes far beyond the construction of a garment. Stray Rats is intended to be a community, a space where those that feel alienated can come together. He recalls going through a ton of names before he actually landed on Stray Rats. And the name Stray Rats actually comes from hardcore and punk music. Rats was actually a term that was used constantly and he fell in love with that and so he felt as though it really reflected in what he was trying to start. Consuega has made a concert, concerted effort to ensure the brand not get pigeonholed uh, so it's not specifically defined as a hardcore brand. So he's done things where he's actually designed um, collections. One of those was a collection for Drake for his summer 16 merchandise. And that absolutely blew up. All right, let's get into the styling portion of the show, shall we? So the first look that I chose was a Ghani trench coat. And the coat is a bit of a darker khaki colorway and on the inside and the collar of that coat, it's actually an olive green. So when I'm looking at these shoes, when I was going through and styling it, I just feel like the olive green on the midsole really is a big presence on this shoe. And there's also these other green tones that you can see on, you know, just the back of the pull tab on, you know, the sides, the medial and the lateral portions of the shoe. So from a distance, when I'm looking at this brown, it's kind of a potent green shoe. I get lost even seeing the brown colorway, but I just think that those olive tones really enhance the Ghani coat and that green collar, it really makes it pop. And the two I think are a perfect con or perfect combo. And so, you know, for the weather, when it's a bit rainy right now in the springtime, I think that's just a great option to wear with this specific silhouette. The next option that I pulled was a leather skirt, but the leather skirt that I chose has a lot of brown tones in it. This obviously doesn't have any black tones whatsoever on the shoe, which is kind of rare because most of my silhouettes have, you know, black on them because as you guys know, I love black but I pulled more of a brown toned skirt and it has some symmetry to it. And I paired it with a simple sweater gray hoodie. And I think that just anything 
with hints of browns are really going to bring the brown shades out of this shoe when it's coordinated together. And that's why I really liked having this, you know, brownish toned skirt and kind of just a simple neutral color to pair it with this since there are other pops of color that really just bring a great combination all together. The next outfit that I chose were corduroy pants and it's a light beige corduroy. So there's something about just like this suede material. I think that there's you know, some greatness to pairing another kind of thicker material. And I think corduroy is a great option to pair with these shoes. And just having a very neutral color will help these shoes stand out a bit more. And that's kind of why I took a more neutral color so that you guys can see what this shoe looks like when, you know, it's kind of the statement piece and it's not the clothing portion that's the statement piece. I paired that again with a, a similar olive toned colored shirt that's similar to the Ghani coat in the beginning that I was talking about. And I just think that olive tones just go wonderfully with these colors and the combination of colors that are on this shoe. Uh, the next outfit that I did was a Balenciaga plaid shirt. And on top of that, it's paired with a denim vest. I just think that denim really goes well with this colorway. And I think plaid and the colors that I chose are sub subtle enough to where these shoes are still gonna be the statement piece. It is a bit more patterny, and I think at first I thought this could be overwhelming, but for some reason it just works. Also on the hood of that shirt, it's kind of like this evergreen tone, and I just wanted to match a different type of green so that you guys could take a look and see that like this shoe, because it has so much green on it, will go well with any type of shade of green. And that's why I went with that Balenciaga look. And last but not least, I did a baggier jean and a light jean denim because I think light denim really brings out these colors as well, not just the light beige that I did with the corduroy pants. And I wanted to kind of show you a baggier cut to kind of get this feel of streetwear because I think that this shoe is really representative of, you know, streetwear as far as baggy pants go. And I, I can just get a sense that, you know, that's going to be a perfect combination. So when I put it together, it just worked very well. And I just paired that with a light, simple gray t-shirt. And, you know, when you see me walking around in this outfit, you can definitely tell that these shoes are the statement piece. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to another Shade TV episode. I know that this episode was jam-packed with lots of information as far as history, sizing, the coloring and styling of the shoe. Uh, it was just all together, I feel like, a jam-packed episode, but hopefully I was able to inform you on everything you need to know before purchasing the shoe. Uh, once again, as I've mentioned in all my videos, we are almost at 3,000 subscribers. This is a new channel, so we're so excited to almost hit this number. Uh, we will be sending our 3,000 subscriber Supreme Oreo cookies and a poncho. So please, please, please continue to follow. And once again, if you're new to this channel, do not forget, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, give this video a thumbs up as well as let me know your thoughts on the shoe, what you thought about styling, have questions about the history. We love to hear from you guys. Until next time, we'll catch you later.